today's video, we're gonna take a look at what a day in the life of a construction project manager could look like. I'm gonna emphasize the word could because construction is such a broad industry with a variety of companies and project managers running unique projects within their own sectors of the industry. You could own your own company or work as a project manager in commercial, residential, industrial, civil, highway, the list goes on. You could be a project manager for a construction management company, a general contractor, you could be an owner's rep, or you could be a project manager under a certain division or trade such as mechanical, landscaping, resilient flooring, and much more. Your day is highly dependent on your role within the industry, the type of project you're currently working on, and the stage your project is at within the overall project schedule. And I'll explain all of this by the end of this video. So let's go. Okay, so I'm not gonna film myself drinking like 15 coffees or stumbling around a job site because I'd like to focus this video on the role at a much broader level. I'm gonna try to capture as much information about my day-to-day -day life, but you'll quickly learn that every day as a construction project manager is going to be different. I'm gonna talk about what I've learned over the years that have helped me professionally and personally. So let's talk about my day in the sense of blocks or windows of time, and then we can drop back and get into the details. For majority of the projects I've been on, my typical day would start with me waking up at at 6 a.m. I spend about 30 minutes getting ready before I'm out the door. I usually sit down at my work desk around 7 a.m. to 7.30 depending on the drive time. This could either be at the office or the job site trailer. From there I work on average until about 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. So because I want to optimize every bit of time I have during the day I'm usually making phone calls either on the way into work or on the way home from work or if I'm traveling from the main office to the job site or anywhere in between just so I don't lose that time when I could be doing something. Also I'm not one to take long lunches so I typically spend about 25 to 30 minutes eating while working at my desk. Every now and then I'll jump in the car, run up the road and grab something. It's less about going out to lunch for me, more about just carving out some time during the day to mentally reload for the afternoon. So I'll typically get home around 5.30, 5.45, have dinner, go on a walk with my wife. If I've got some emails to clean up from the day, I'll typically knock those out as well, which may take 30 minutes. I'll focus just on the critical ones and leave the low priority ones for the next work day. If it's crunch time on a project, I could potentially be working working from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in some instances, sometimes on the weekends as well. I've also worked on projects where I was able to leave daily at 4 p.m. It all depends on the project you're on again and your project team, the project schedule, and all that's involved. I'll talk about the ebb and flow of a project in just a minute and when these long days might occur and more so why they might occur. So when the project's not in its busy cycle, I've got some additional free time from that 6.30 p.m. to about that 10 o'clock p.m. window. I'll usually just spend that with my wife or on some hobbies to decompress press and as of recent making YouTube videos. So yeah, end of the day is typically around 9 30 10 p.m. just so I'm feeling refreshed for the next day. Okay so before I jump into the details of what I actually do during my workday as a construction project manager I want you to think about those blocks of time that we just talked about. For you to be successful in both your personal and professional life there's really two things you need to consider. So number one is knowing what these blocks of time look like in your professional and personal life in regards to scheduled durations and you do this by putting those blocks of time on a daily and weekly calendar. This is going to show you two things how much time you have to focus on your career and how much time you have to focus on everything else. This seems simple, but again, I'll explain why it's easy to overlook in construction project management. So number two is learning to understand your limits and your capabilities. Burnout is a real thing in construction, so understand what you can accomplish within those blocks of time and just be realistic with yourself. So I'm gonna pull up two examples of typical days that I've had on previous projects within my career. And so why am I talking about this? It's because projects don't last forever. You're gonna get put on a new job with new time constraints when your previous job is wrapped up. Your travel time to one job site may have previously been 15 minutes, your travel time to the next job site may be 40 minutes. Well, if I do the math, the previous job gave you an extra 50 minutes each day that you wouldn't have on the next job. So it's easy in construction to get thrown out of a stable cycle and not even realize it. Some projects are more demanding, needing higher levels of coordination and effort, which could mean to longer work days that may go beyond 5 p.m. Some jobs may be easier with less coordination and you could be leaving at 4 p.m., sometimes even earlier. Now I'm diving into this because project managers and construction workers in general constantly have to juggle this aspect of the industry with their personal life and it directly impacts my day in the life. So let's talk about my actual workday now, which is dependent on the project life cycle and where my team is at schedule wise. So prior to a project starting, you're typically in an estimating phase, which then leads to an award and then contract buyout. As a construction project manager, you spend this time reviewing drawings, specifications, bids, making phone calls between subcontractors to ensure that your project is gonna be fully covered between all 
all aspects of the scope required. So in these initial days of the project, you're usually putting together bid packages for the subcontractors to look and to price against. You're looking at procurement lead times and you're determining the highest levels of risk that may impact your project. It's a lot of administrative and pre-planning on the front end and usually would consume the entire workday, meaning that you're either firing off emails or making phone calls to compile all this information. So although construction's a massive industry, it's actually a pretty small community. So you're typically working with people that you've already worked with in the past or people that you'll work with again in the future. This is the most critical time of the project in my opinion because this is where all the pre-planning takes place to ensure that you're going to be set up for success. The majority of this time is actually spent in the office setting with the potential of visiting a job site just for the sake of walking with other contractors to visually understand where the project is going to take place and any other considerations to include from a budget and schedule standpoint. So most of your days are typically focused from the office setting. You're getting contracts issued. The construction project manager will usually have a superintendent assigned at this point. And this is where you start to transfer that wealth of knowledge that you gain from the pre-construction team, putting together the estimates, the schedules, and so on and so forth to your superintendent and any other project team members that were not involved on the front end so that they understand where your days are headed. So after these couple weeks of getting these contracts issued, your focus is going to shift as a project manager into pushing for material release, especially materials with long lead times that you can get ahead of. This is where the submittal process takes place and will take place for the next month approximately. So majority of your day from this point moving forward is to track down submittals, review and process them, just ensuring that everything's coordinated to meet design, the drawings, the specification requirements, so on and so forth. So this is where you actually start to carve out those larger blocks of time into smaller blocks of time. For instance, if your electrical equipment takes 12 months of lead time, meaning that's how long it takes from the time you place the order to the time it gets to the site, but your paint only takes one day to get, which one are you going to focus on? Well, the project is actually going to focus and dictate what your days look like. That's why every day is going to be slightly different because your priority is going to change over time to meet the demands of the project. So you're going to get better at managing your time by understanding what must be done and what would be nice to have done. So this goes back to understanding both your limits and the limits of others. And that's really your job at the end of the day. Everyone is unique in their style of communication and their understanding of the construction process and sequences. So it's your job to prioritize who you think might need more hands-on attention and who can be left alone while still being successful. And this leads into the day-to-day -day management of both your own project team, if you have individuals working underneath you, as well as the contractors who are helping you complete the project. And so simply put, you're driving the success of the project by engaging all the team members to ensure everyone is working towards a common goal. In these early phases, you're also setting up tools to track items such as cost logs, material delivery logs, and any other tracking items that are going to help support the project's success. So now that construction is somewhat underway, your work week is going to start filling up with meetings. Typically, you'll have an OAC meeting, which stands for Owner, Architect, and Contractor. This is typically an hour-long group meeting set up on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and it's time set aside to go through a list of items such as requested design changes, those cost logs I just talked about, schedules, and much more. As a project manager, you're typically the face of your company running these meetings and reporting to these stakeholders of the project. And in addition to the OAC meeting, you'll typically have some other project meetings where you have the subcontractors or trade contractors on site with you, just working through general coordination as the schedule progresses. Your superintendent will typically run some huddles in the morning for the site foremen who are coming onto site. While the superintendent's running these morning huddles, you and the superintendent should be sidebarring. Looking at the next two to three months, you as a project manager should be focusing on getting material to the site so that the superintendent can get that material installed on the building. You use this time to look at any obstacles, talk about constraints. So midway to the end of each month, as a project manager, you're going to be compiling payment requests from the subcontractors and eventually submitting these to the owner for approval. This triggers the release of funds for work completed to that point in time, which then feeds the cycle of construction at this point and moving forward. So you essentially follow this cycle, which takes up majority of your days until the project is nearing completion. I would say about 70 to 75% of your time is spent making phone calls, coordinating through email or coordinating through meetings at the job site trailer to kick off certain aspects of the scope. Uh, about 25 to 30% is actually walking the site, submitting RFIs or questions to the design team, and then just further supporting the field team's needs. The project transitions into a completion phase, as do your day-to-day -day activities. You ramp up more administrative items, such as closing everything out financially, getting all your subcontractors paid, getting the owner up to speed on their new building through owner training, helping manage the punch list with your superintendent until you get transferred onto another project. So there are so many variables at play in construction that could result in smooth days, and those variables can also 
also lead to some stress, each being unique and making your days non-typical. It's all about how it's managed and learning to focus on the big picture. Control what you can control in the moment and trust the people around you to handle the rest. You can pre-plan everything to perfection and things still will go wrong. Just let it go, start to work on how you can fix it as a team player. No day is truly typical in construction project management because material released six months ago might show up on time, it might not show up on time. These ever-changing variables keep things interesting, challenging, but most of all gratifying when you've gotten through them at the end of the day and you're standing in front of a built building. So at the start of every day, I ask myself one simple question. How am I going to make those around me successful and what roadblocks do I need to get out of the way or problems do I need to solve to make that happen? If you can set everyone else up for success, then most likely your days and your projects are going to be successful as well. Now for those of you who made it to the end of this video, this is where the true passion in construction comes from. This isn't something I can convey in words as it lies within the relationships that build the industry. So shout out to the hardworking tradespeople out there in the field who actually get these buildings built. Shout out to the design teams who work closely with their construction teams to deliver success. Shout out to anyone who's got their hand in any aspect of the project because it wouldn't be possible without you. Seeing hundreds of individuals come together as a team to deliver success that will be around for decades to come is truly impressive. No matter what you're working on, you're building communities that will serve your family, friends, and strangers alike. That's something to be proud of. Let me know if you're currently working on a project in the comment section below so I can give you a shout out and send you some appreciation. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.